let us start bismillah ar rahman ar rahim this is the 13th lecture and today we will continue with our previous um, lecture that is a lecture on uh, bipolar junction transistors last time we had an introduction to the bjt and we saw the physical construction of the bjt this time we will inshallah study the operation of the bjt and and if time allows the characteristics also okay ji so we will start with slide number 14 slide number 14 is in fact a revision of the pn junction when the pn junction is forward biased or reverse biased when a pn junction is forward biased the current is due to majority carriers whenever we have a pn junction that is forward biased then it will experience a current and this current is contributed by only the majority carriers and when the same pn junction is reverse biased the current is due to minority carriers but since the minority carriers are in a very very low concentration therefore we have a very very small minority current and thus we normally neglect the minority carriers and we say that there is no current although there is a current maybe in microampere or even nanoamperes but since such low ampere amperes cannot be measured with our normal meters with our normal digital volt ampere meters or when the diode is reverse biased there is no current and you, we will use this fact in our today's lecture let us look at the properties of the pn junction under reverse bias condition in this diagram we have a normal pn junction we have the p type we have the p type material it has a large number of holes it has a large concentration of holes we have the p type material it has a large number of holes it has a large concentration of holes and then we have the n type material which has a large concentration of free electrons and when we join them together there is a depletion region at the junction of the p type and the n type material now with this pn junction if we reverse bias the pn junction that is as shown in the next diagram if we connect the positive terminal of the battery to the n type material and negative terminal of the battery to the p type material we get a pn junction that is reverse biased we get a pn junction that is reverse biased now what will happen to the depletion region what will happen to the depletion region the depletion region under reverse biased condition it will widen it will increase in width the electric field inside will be large now this is the first thing that will happen and then minority carriers to cross the pn junction easily through drift that is when the pn junction is reverse biased then minority carriers they will pass very easily through the pn junction now let us look at the p type material the p type material has large concentration of holes and the minority carriers in the p type material will be electrons so if we take an electron in the p type material i will draw electron over here this is an electron in the p type material the existence of the electron in the p type material is like a minority the status of the electron in the p type material is that of a minority carriers that is in the p type material electrons are in minority and when we reverse bias the pn junction this minority electron in the p type material will pass easily through the pn junction by the help of drift when we have reverse biased our pn material our pn junction then only the minority carriers they pass through the pn junction so minority carrier to cross the pn junction easily through drift current is composed mostly of drift current contributed by minority carriers this is very important that when the pn junction is reverse biased then current is composed mostly of drift current 
contributed by minority carriers and what are the minority carriers the minority carriers are holes in the n type material and electrons in the p type material the current from n side to p side the current is negative that is current flows in the negative direction now let us come to the transistor operation and we will use both the facts of the pn junction when it is forward bias and the reverse bias in the uh, transistor operation so in the next slide we have the transistor operation um, the diagram shows a npn transistor where we have the collector terminal the base terminal and the emitter terminal the base and the emitter are forward biased and the collector and the base are reverse biased we are using two power supplies the first power supply v1 it is used to forward bias the base emitter and the second power supply v2 it is used to reverse bias collector and the base and the emitter is the common point in this circuit it is one technique or it is one uh, way to connect our npn transistor and the voltage v2 is larger than voltage v1 now the base emitter junction is forward bias the base over here and the emitter terminal over here they are forward bias so in the base we have a p type material and in the emitter we have a n type material how can we forward bias the pn material that is if we connect the p type material to the positive side of the battery and if we connect the n type material to the negative side of the battery then we will forward bias then we will forward bias the base emitter junction so we have forward bias the base emitter then the base collector junction is reverse biased the base collector junction is reverse biased this is the base and this is the collector and in between we have the base collector junction it is reverse biased that is the collector is connected at a voltage at a higher potential as compared to the base then by doing so we will reverse bias the base collector junction so we are we have connected collector at voltage v2 voltage v2 is at a higher potential as compared to voltage v1 therefore we have reverse biased we have reverse bias the base collector junction so so far base emitter junction is forward biased and base collector junction is reverse biased okay now we move on since base emitter junction is forward biased the electrons from emitter are injected across the base emitter junction into the base that is this is the emitter current okay so here we have the base terminal and then we have the emitter terminal we will learn the function of the npn transistor with the help of electron movement we will not uh, we will not use conventional current specifically for the transistor operation we will use the electron movement to study the transistor operation now in this diagram the red colored circles they represent electrons and the arrow represents the motion of electron so the this red color so if we can see in this legend that this is the electron motion now in the base and emitter since base emitter is forward biased we will we will have a current conventional current will flow from base to emitter since base emitter is forward biased therefore current will flow the conventional current will flow from the base to the emitter but since we are not going to study in terms of the conventional current we will take the electron motion as our current therefore if conventional current flows from base to emitter then the electron current flows from emitter to the base this is very important it is in the opposite direction as of the conventional current the electron motion is always in opposite direction as of the conventional current since conventional current flows from base to emitter therefore our electron motion flows from emitter to base now so far we have seen that emitter the emitter since it is n type therefore there are electrons in the emitter and when we have forward biased the base emitter these electrons they will now 
be injected in the base. They will be now injected in the base. In the base, we have one physical constraint. That is the doping in the base. The doping of the base terminal or doping of the base region is the least. That is more electrons from the anti-material when they enter into the base, they find very few holes to recombine with. The emitter has injected electrons into the base, but in the base, there are very small number of, there are very low concentration of holes because the base is lightly doped. Therefore, the base has very small concentration of holes. If there is small concentration of holes, then we will have small concentration of recombination. That is very small number of electrons, they will recombine with the holes. So this brings us to the second point that once the, in the base region, the electrons are quickly accelerated through the base due to reverse bias collector emitter, collector base region. Now in the base region, since the base is lightly doped, there are few number concentration of holes for the electrons to combine with. So the presence of the electrons in the base will be of minority carriers. That is, if you look in the diagram, the base is of P-type material. In the P-type material, the majority status will be of holes, whereas the minority status will be of electrons. Now we have a large number of electrons coming from the emitter. Inside, once inside the base, the electron, they become the minority carriers. And also, since the collector base junction is reverse biased, and in reverse bias, we have just studied that there is always minority current. Therefore, the electrons, they will pass quickly into the collector region. And this brings us to the fourth point, that is some electrons passing through the base region. So this electron, they are swept into the collector. Now, if we look at the base alone, if we look at the base alone, since uh, the, the doping was very small, the doping concentration was very small. Therefore, a few electrons, they recombine and they pass through the base region, recombine with majority carriers in the holes, and this produces the current IB. So this is how our transistor will work. So in, this, uh, in the next slide, we will look at a very simple animation of the transistor operation. So in, in this slide, we have a animation. I have broken the animation into two parts. The first part will be that of the base emitter. And the second part will be that of the complete transistor operation. So the part of the animation that we are looking at is also called the input side. The input side consists of the base and the emitter only. So in this slide, we will discuss the activities happening in the base and the emitter. We must not also forget uh, that the base emitter is forward biased. So in this animation, what we see is we see the base and the emitter terminal. The base is made up of P-type material and the emitter is made up of N-type material. Secondly, the base has a smaller width. The base has a smaller doping. That is the concentration of holes in the base is small. If it is the smallest. Whereas the emitter has a moderate width, but it has the largest doping level. That is in the uh, emitter, since emitter is made up of N-type material, therefore, the concentration of electrons will be the maximum. Th then we have a resistance RB. RB is a limiting resistance. It will just control the amount of current that will flow. And then we are using an external power supply called VBB. And this external power supply is used to forward bias the base emitter. 
since the base emitter has a normal barrier voltage of 0.7 volts therefore the external power supply voltage should always be larger than 0.7 volt so in our case we are taking vbb larger than 0.7 volt and what will this do it will forward bias the pn junction when the pn junction is forward biased we have majority carriers flowing from the base to emitter and if we talk in terms of electron then we will have majority carriers that is electron flowing from emitter to the base now this is exactly what is happening in the animation that we see electron movement these carriers that we see that are moving they are in fact the electrons that are in motion so with the base emitter forward bias we see electrons they are moving we also see a fact that since concentration of electron in the emitter is large and when these electrons they are injected inside the base only few electrons they recombine with the holes in the base and they travel into the positive plate of the battery that is they become base current whereas the remaining large majority of electrons they are left without recombination now we come to the next slide in the next slide we see these complete mode of operation we see the complete mode of operation of that is we see the complete transistor operation we have the same transistor we have an emitter it is of n type material then a base it is of p type material and collector again of n type material the base emitter is forward biased the base emitter is forward biased whereas the base collector is reverse biased now we have already seen the working of base emitter that is the the base emitter is forward biased and base has less concentration of holes so a very small electron they recombine and create a very small base current now the remaining part or the remaining electrons that are present in the base they are swept away from the collector they are swept away into the collector and this makes the this current this current makes the collector current the collector current the collector current is due to the electron that were injected in the base but those electron could not recombine and they were left idle and then since the collector is positive in nature since the collector is positive therefore this positive electric field attracts or swipes swipes away the electrons in the base and hence we get a collector current so this is how the transistor it will work and to summarize uh, let us look at this diagram it is almost the same diagram v1 is the power supply that forward biases base emitter v2 is the power supply that reverse biases base collector now some electron recombine with holes injected in the base region however most of the electrons are swept across the base region by the electric field at the base collector junction so we will find that the base current is very small because inside the base the concentration of holes is very small the large number of electrons that were injected from the emitter into the base are now swept away into the collector by the positive electric field of the collector this is the transistor operation in terms of electron motion however if we look if we want to look at the transistor operation in terms of conventional current then it will always be in the opposite direction as a, as that of the electron motion that is now the electron they flow from emitter to base then then the conventional current flows from base to emitter and this is called the base current ib and secondly if conventional electron they flow from base to collector then 
the conventional current flows from collector into the base and then into the emitter. And this is called the collector current, IC. Inside the emitter, we have two currents, the base current and the collector current. And this current in the emitter, it is called the IE or the emitter current, which is always the combination of base current and the collector current. That is IE is equal to IB plus IC. Now in the next slide, we will summarize our conventional currents and their relationship. That is, we have just learned that IE, which represents the emitter current, it is equal to base current IB plus collector current IC. IE is equal to IB plus IC. This diagram now shows current in the conventional fashion. That is, inside the base, we have the base current. Inside the collector, we have the collector current. And coming out of the emitter is the emitter current. And the relationship between IE, IB, and IC is that IE, that is I emitter, is equal to base current plus collector current. And secondly, the relationship between collector current and base current is IC is equal to beta times IB. Beta is the gain of the transistor. Beta is the gain of the transistor. IC is equal to beta times IB. Beta is a constant number. It is the gain of the transistor and the value of beta is normally found from the data sheet provided by the manufacturer of the transistor. And then the emitter current in terms of base current is equal to IE is equal to IB bracket one plus beta. So this can be found by rearranging equation number one. And the relationship between collector current and emitter current is called alpha. Alpha is equal to the ratio of collector current divided by emitter current. Alpha is equal to collector current divided by emitter current. And alpha is normally very close to one. So these are the important parameters of the transistor. So uh, my dear students, I will finish this online class over here. Please go through all of the theory that we have done today. Uh, read from the textbooks. Start with initial examples as in the next lecture, inshallah, we will start with some examples also. We will do characteristics and also the um, examples and the characteristics also. So thank you very much for your time. Okay, Islam alaikum.